The idea that Jesus survived the crucifixion is a theory with many variations. Let's look at two aspects of this. One accessory to the swoon hypothesis is to suggest that the hyssop given to Jesus on the cross was somehow filled with drugs that induced a comatose state. The appeal to this is odd since the same critics who make this appeal reject such things as the spear thrust, simply because only John records it, and he is also the only one who reports the use of the hyssop. But with respect to whether it is even plausible that Jesus was drugged in a way to imitate death, I would refer to the expertise of someone who knows better. We alluded to the spear thrust earlier. There are a number of aspects to discuss concerning John's report that a centurion speared Jesus on the side, resulting in a flow of what is described as blood and water. Though persons with no serious medical knowledge may suggest that the spear thrust was to some other area such as the large intestine, a physician trained in critical care knows much better. If the medical aspects cannot be countermanded, critics may then resort to the argument that because only John mentions the spear thrust, it didn't happen. This is simply arbitrary. But indeed, one may set side-by-side -side parallel accounts of many complex historical events, and find that only one may have mentioned this detail or that. Critics need a better reason to say that the report was invented, and some think they have found that reason in John's so-called theological intent. The Catholic scholar Raymond Brown was highly critical of medical writers analyzing the crucifixion for not recognizing that any or all of these features might embody theological symbolism rather than a historical description. But it's frankly just as equitable to criticize Brown, a theologian, for not recognizing that theological symbolism is far from mutually exclusive of historical description. Although some much later commentators in the early church saw the blood and water as symbolic of the Eucharist and baptism, this interpretation owes far more to creativity by those commentators than it does to anything John has written. John shows no interest in the baptism of Jesus, and he doesn't detail the elements of the Lord's Supper. Blood by itself is also never a symbol of the Eucharist. If any symbolism is inherent, it is indeed that blood represents life poured out by death, and water the new life of baptism. The only real theological coloring John offers with respect to this event is that it fulfills an Old Testament passage. But this begs the question of whether John invented the event or selected it from a roster of historical events. Initially, the critic may point out that John makes excessive assertions indicating the truth of his report, which supposedly raises suspicions that he is not telling the truth. But there's nothing excessive in John's pronouncement when you consider that he was probably combating a sort of docetic heresy in his time, which held that Jesus was an illusory being, not one of flesh and blood. Strongly affirming his testimony is no more suspicious than our modern request that people swear an oath in court. Moreover, such affirming oaths were far from usual in the rhetoric of the day, and they were not considered to be suspicious. Indeed, they were actually more of an honor challenge to those who doubted the truth of the claim. The historical plausibility of the event in itself is what is at issue, and all evidence points to a positive verdict. 
A single extra-biblical testimony on this subject from the Roman author Quintilian indicates as follows. That's a look at the swoon theory from the perspective of Jesus on the cross. For the next aspects of it, we'll look at it from the perspective of Jesus in the tomb. See you next time.